a soil scientist, I really felt compelled to talk about how remote sensing can actually be used in soil and terrain mapping. Now, it's obviously very well documented that remote sensing is really good above the ground, but this article actually went into depth about how we could predict some of these below ground features we using remote sensing. Now, soil is really complicated. It's pretty much a cornerstone in hydrology, carbon sequestration, and plant growth, respiration, overland flow equations, and all sorts of really important modeling and environmental processes. However, it's really cost prohibitive to measure parameters like soil moisture, texture, and structure at a level to truly represent the environment. You also can't really see what's going on beneath your feet because these horizons that are pictured in this picture go in and out and some of them are there and some of them aren't and that differs based on where you are in the landscape. However, this article is a review of the methods that can be used to get soils data based on different types of remote sensing technology. Now, the article mentioned a couple of different me methodologies including passive and active radar, LIDAR, light imaging and detecting, light imaging and detecting radar, um, optical multispectral images, and spectroscopy. Now, most of spectroscopy needs to be measured with a handheld device, and I'm going to focus on the optical multispectral images, which is what class mostly covers. And, um, this picture is actually of the landform and terrain modeling that you can use through DEM equations that can be used in equations to talk about soil. Now, the multispectral image data isn't really all that effective for measuring soil properties. It is extremely or highly effective with the NDVI vegetation indexes and also looking at land degradation and land cover, especially if you have a good training algorithm set. It is okay in measuring mineralogy, texture, um, photosynthetic and non-photosynthetic vegetation, and the plant functional type, like hardwood or softwood. And it really isn't very good at picking out iron content, organic carbon, moisture, salinity, carbon content, or lichens. Now, there are a couple of um, studies out there that really show that the best way to look at different soil properties is through the active-based radar properties. And um, there are several satellites out there that have active data that you can look at this stuff and um, extrapolate on a 30-meter scale. This is just a really cool picture of soil mineralogy. And as you can see, there are some issues that kind of crop up when vegetation starts becoming a part of the picture. And accurate estimation of soil attributes, even if you can't can see things, really gets hampered if the pictures have a vegetation cover of only 20%. In conclusion, the passive and active radar and spectroscopy, which is cost prohibitive, are much better choices for measuring soil surface attributes and some of the stuff that could potentially be below. Multispectral images do have a place in soil remote sensing, but mostly through the use of covariates in geographic weighted regression models and other environmental phenomena models, etc. Thank you.